Welcome back to the channel and before we get into today's video I just want to say this video is a compilation of what was supposed to be part 3, 4, and 5 of the Black Hatch but due to some parts delays, some parts simply just not coming at all and on top of fighting a shipping deadline for the car to go back home in Georgia I decided to merge them all together where with what we left off with the hatch and where we got it to. So I'll join you back at the end and enjoy the clip show. <laughs> I looked at him, told him it never happened. Then gunned it. Oh, Hi. All right. Now that we're done with stories that never happened, yeah, picking right. up right after, yeah, right. <laughs> right after where we left off. Right we're starting the electrical system so we can get some power through this, and then hopefully we can start this by Friday, the uh, 10th of May. Friday, Friday is not the 10th. Monday is the 10th. The 14th. Excuse me. So, we got, <laughs> I forget who we got the harness from on eBay, I'll put the link in the description. It's a slight little AFI. It's a slight tuck harness, so this should route down the side and then through the firewall. So let's plug this up, get this going, and then start the conversion harness for the chassis adapter. And then we can start doing the wire tuck as well. So we got brown, red, blue and yellow. We got the harness in. The only clip so far I've had to adapt is the knock sensor for the K24 style plug. And the TPS here, which looks like it's a Mustang TPS because the throttle body is a Mustang throttle body. So I'm just going to have to adapt it, ground here, signal here, and then power on this side, which I'm pretty sure these are all in the same location as the Honda. I'm just going to look it up really quick before we wire it in. And then that's it with the harness for like 300 bucks. It's not bad. Not bad at all. All right, we're gonna finish that and then we're gonna do the chassis adapter on the inside. All right, we're getting going on the conversion harness on the inside. We're gonna clean up some of the rest of the wiring. I know we're not gonna need these anymore, so we're gonna tie these up and hide them out of the way. We're also gonna mount the fuse box somewhere underneath the dash where it's out of the way. And then, We'll start with the wire tuck and run the fender harnesses out through the sides and down to where they need to go. Don't think we need to extend any anything, if not maybe one or two things, but I'm pretty sure I've done the EG before without having to extend anything. I've you have the driver's side fender harness just about ready to come out. The previous owner sought in his infinite wisdom to drill a hole here and run it through here cut another hole here and leave random grinder marks all over the place to rust up for us. And we got a mystery hole over here. So we're gonna clean up this wiring, pull it through the firewall, disconnect it from the two little plugs back here. I'll see if I can get a shot of that with the camera. And then we're gonna route this through here on the side door here along the sides. Maybe we'll use this hole that he left us. Maybe we won't, we'll see. Since we're replacing the entire fuel line front to back, both feed and return, we can get rid of this giant hunk of junk over here. This is starting to like rust and flake out. Some of the brake lines already broke off and they replaced them, but they didn't take the old ones out. 
I don't blame them. I wouldn't fish those out either. I just run the new lines kind of like how they did, but I probably would have did the AN ones at the time instead of just the copper nickel line. So we're going to replace those. We have our fuel lines slightly ran already. They're already plugged up on the fuel pressure regulator. We got both the feed and return. They look the same size, but one's a dash eight and the other's a dash six. The PTFE lines are a little bit slimmer than the traditional AN stuff. And we're just gonna plumb them up to where the fuel sending unit is, and then we're gonna replace the pump there as well. But for now, I'm gonna cut these guys out and get them out of the way so we can hang up the actual new PTFE lines. So let's do that, and then I'll pick up the camera when we got something cool to show. So here's everything we've taken out so far. Here's all the extra lines. We got some heat shields that we took off because of weight reduction. That's another box of other shit we took out of the car. All of this is getting replaced with AN stuff. Well, PTFE lines. It's just force of habit to say AN. So we finally got some of the fittings in to do the fuel system in the back. So starting off, we're doing the AM 320 liter per hour alcohol, ethanol, and gasoline friendly fuel pump. We also got a dash six bulkhead fitting to barb so we can run the return as an AN. I already have the banjo bolt adapter to dash eight in the car. That's around there. And then we're just about done with this because all the lines are ran. I'm just going to build one last PTFE line and then we're done and we're going to try to start this thing. Emphasis on try. Alright, hopefully I'm not too overexposed right here. It is a very sunny day today. And welcome back to another installment on the K-Series hatch build. Today we're getting to the brake line tuck and the clutch line as well. Everything we got was from JEGS. I'll put the measurements and part numbers in the description. So if you wanted to do this to your own car, you could kind of replicate the same. But do so on your own. This is purely for a car that's going to be on the track only. Alright, we got the clutch line ran already. We got a 90 degree banjo down to a 40 inch line to a metric to AN adapter on the slave. Let's see if we can catch that on the key. Yep, to the metric to AN fitting there. And the line comes up, wraps around the side. Back up to the master. And we have the master feed to the prop valve already slightly mapped out. We're gonna use one of the holes that's left over from the heater core that didn't get paint that we found once we took the bolt off. So we just slightly opened that up to accept the bulkhead fitting. And then I'm just going to drill a hole over here so it's so it's uniform and then we'll connect the lines and then I'll show you how we're doing the prop valve on the inside. Alright, for your prop valve you're going to want to grab six of your metric 10 to 3AN inverted flare adapters, install them just like this, and then save the remaining four for the corners of the wheel well where we're going to connect the AN line to the soft line to the each caliper like this and also like this and I'm gonna mount this in the car I'm gonna show you where I'm mounting it because I don't have the SRS computer probably gonna mount it in there you may have it but you have a little bit of wiggle room to move this around with the flexible AN lines and you could move this around in different directions to fit what your car has exactly
She's a little janky. So that leaves us to where we are right now. So we was held up by parts delays and we couldn't get the car finished in time for the quick five days that Lottie was here. And it's on its way, well the trailer company is on its way now to come get the car so they can bring it to him in Atlanta. So we'll probably join up when they're here to get the car and we'll catch up then. Just take one more last look at her. This is the kind of shit they got us doing. So I guess you can say the car drove down the street. All right, let me put this away for now. Alright, so that's the end of the Black Hatch project, or series. So we really didn't get to finish it. Um, we was held up by parts delays, as we said earlier. Um, some parts that we paid for overnight shipping for took three days to come, and it was more or less on like the last day when everything decided to show up, and the time crunch, it just wasn't doable. Sometimes you just can't finish within the time frame. But we did get it to where the car did start turning on, and I feel like that's a feat in its own because the car came as a total bare shell, no brakes, no motor, no electrical, and to where we was able to kind of get the car running at the end. I mean, for five days, I feel like we got a lot done, but had we had maybe two or three more days, we probably would have got the car to where it was more or less ready to hit the dyno, which is kind of what we planned for, but kind of can't plan for things that are out of your control right so what we're gonna do is we'll probably join up again in the hatch with the hatch later on it's back home in Georgia because that was another thing we was fighting was the shipping company coming for the car um, we'll join back up with the car in Georgia um, I believe Blotty has someone who he wants to tune with and when the car gets to that point we'll take a trip down and we'll get the card we'll get a get a video of the car on the dyno so if you made it to this part of the video and through the entire video thank you for watching because i'm pretty sure it's a long video of a lot of stuff that really didn't make sense because we were 
rushing through getting stuff done with the car that the camera really wasn't picked up a lot and so we were just trying to get get done and get through stuff so thanks for watching I appreciate each and every single one of you and don't forget to like subscribe comment and share and we'll see you next time where I think we might be starting the prelude because as I'm sitting here doing this outro I'm really missing the car and starting to reminisce of all the fun stuff we did with it and I think this is going to be the next one even though I already started the CRX we might save that for later on in the year so we'll catch you next time see ya